somewhere behind the door. Hydrophobia contains the most advanced water physics I've ever seen in a proper game. It's just a shame the rest of it is so bad. Worse than you could even imagine. It's testament to this game's badness that I didn't even bother completing it when it first came out, and back then I was utterly hyped for its water physics. These days, it's somehow got even worse. It's probably why you haven't heard of this game until now, because even though its water physics really are extremely impressive, it's still completely overshadowed by the sheer terribleness of the rest of the game. I didn't have strong feelings about it one way or the other for about two thirds of the playthrough. I spent that time running through samey looking corridors, doing samey feeling actions and engaging in subpar firefights, but the final third of the game was such utter shite, it retroactively ruined the rest of the game for me, and then it impressed me by getting even worse again, several times. I eventually rage quit the final boss because it was that unfun. Well actually, I did eventually complete it once I typed up the script and realised the controls it was telling me were lies, but that changes nothing about my experience. I then looked up the story behind this game, and it sounds like the development was troubled and the game was such a flop that it bankrupted the studio. I also noticed lots of the same surname in the credits, which makes me feel like it was family run, so I feel kind of bad about slating the game so much. But on the other hand, this was over 10 years ago, and even after several attempts to fix it, the game is still rubbish. So let's begin. There will be spoilers in this video, I don't care and you shouldn't either, but before we get onto that, first let's look at those excellent water physics. Granted, they're not without their own bugs, they get a bit overexcited and waves dramatically dance about from time to time, but so what? The water in this game pours through doorways, you can literally see it on the other side of glass windows, and as that room empties itself of water, the water level on that side will drop convincingly and it'll rise on the other, until the water level reaches equilibrium. I'll shoehorn awesome looking water bits throughout this video simply because they're worth seeing, but absolutely not worth playing. It's an amazing bit of tech, to think all this was possible back on the PlayStation 3. Surely it wouldn't take much to slip it into a few modern games. You know, just for fun. It has so much potential which this game does less than nothing with, which is a shame. Can I just say that your character in this game looks exactly like the person from that really old Radeon's Architect demo, the one with the fancy water effect. Coincidence? Who did this? How the hell should I know? When I was younger, I didn't care too much about storylines. These days I still don't, but the difference now is that I resent bad ones, which hydrophobia has in abundance. There's some kind of sick message! It's being broadcast all over the ship. Like I said, I don't care for them, but this one is so bad it managed to get my attention. I imagine the game must have been developed by people in their 20s and 30s, yet the script is written to a level that I'd expect from a 12 year old. Oh, I hope his mother knows he's smoking. Just unlikable characters, immature silly lines, and a bit early on in this game shows it perfectly. You've got to rescue your boss from burning alive, and it's clear your character and your friend dislike this guy. Even though you're all stuck in an emergency situation, your radio guide person is still joking and mocking him like it's office banter. Big bad Billingham needs an engineer to come to his rescue. <laughs> this is priceless. Remotely open that door and be quick, Kate. I can't ridicule Billingham if he's dead. Yes, you rescue him and he turns out to be a real bastard, but it doesn't make your character seem any better. Engineers blame complications. Officers get the job done. I don't believe I'm hearing this crap. Despite its watery setting, it feels like everything in Hydrophobia was written in a vacuum. I had zero sympathy for anybody in this game and was still let down by the ending. Son of a bitch! If the whole game had been like the first act, then I think it would have been okay. Repetitive as hell, but yeah, you know, atmospheric. Enter a room, solve a puzzle of some sort, be rewarded with water physics. Repeat. They try to mix it up by having this hacking puzzle, which I haven't come close to failing once, and there's this Marvy interface to find invisible crypto thingies to unlock doors. You jump between camera screens to open doors like twice in the game. I mean the game is less than three hours long. The whole game is just head towards the next objective over and over again, which I'm split on because while I hate being led by the hand, the repetitive nature of the game's environments would guarantee I wouldn't find it any other way. It's a shame the water is the only fun thing about this game that is constantly secondary to all of the unfun things. I get the feeling like they made the awesome water physics but never really found a good way of featuring gameplay around it, at least until the very end of development. But I'll get onto that later. But first, second, Act 2. About halfway through this game you eventually get a gun and the action starts and it's god awful. <laughs> You could have warned me! Gee, I've got two balls and neither of them are crystal, okay? Think of this game as being like Control, but really bad, and you're about there. 
Your gun has five different sorts of ammo, but due to the fiddly menu and control system, you have to press J to detonate rounds for some reason, I never found myself using anything other than the stock infinite ammo option. You can fire it instantly and it'll do nothing, or you can charge it up and it'll one-hit kill anything. Problem is, the game masterfully combines all of the worst elements from all third-person shooting games that you've ever seen. Your crosshair doesn't really represent where your shot will go, and it will more often than not miss and get stopped prematurely by something standing between your character and where you're aiming at. It's not good. And unfortunately, those enemies keep coming. It isn't rewarding when you hit an enemy, because sometimes they'll fall over but won't die, sometimes a spark looks like a bullet, which causes you to spend a while searching for a non-existent enemy, and sometimes your character lets out a cry of pain for no good reason, again, causing you to search for an enemy that doesn't exist. And there are so many explosive thingies lurking about in the rooms that you're more likely to kill yourself than you are an enemy by detonating them. It's honestly quite impressive how little fun I had from the gunplay in this game. The water isn't the only physics-based thing in this game. There are other things that blob and jiggle about. Most impressive of these are these shootable cables. They break exactly where you shoot them and then drop down into a messy clump on the floor. Next gen physics and all that. These are typically electrified and the gameplay consists of dying to one of these, reloading to the nearest checkpoint and then shooting every cable in the level just in case. And I'm not sure what fire's doing in this game. It seems to float about on the surface of the water in a really silly looking way, and yes it can still hurt you. All this is just a minor annoyance, but trust me, it gets much worse. Which gets us on to Act 3. And just to prepare you for how bad this segment of the game is, a guide for this game literally says, good news, Act 3 is the shortest level throughout the game. You know how I said the game was like Control, but bad? Yeah, this is where it lives up to that. You, spoiler alert, get infected with weird nano thingies, which gives you magical powers to control the water. Nah, I'm just kidding. I don't know where I got that idea from, maybe from the game's cover, I don't know. No, what this nano thing means is that occasionally as you enter a new area, you suddenly get a timer on screen and you'll die unless you can find some sort of anti-nano death tablet in time. Like I said, it's impressive how this game managed to find every unfun gameplay element even though it's quite literally swimming in good ideas. It's flooded with potential. What a shame. And it crashed a few times for me too. And then it hit me. And then the game commits the ultimate sin. It starts chucking enemies in the water with you, or on a platform as you're flopping about in the water below, unable to see or to shoot them due to the shoddy shooting and camera controls. The game never really gets that hard. You might have to replay a scene a few times when an enemy gets the jump on you, or when you accidentally fall more than 8 feet to almost sudden death. It's just unfun. And then it spawns enemies in bits you've been before. Or maybe it doesn't, but it all looks the same anyway, so I don't know. It's hard to tell where you've been after a while. The endless corridors of this game are tiring. And then it starts gearing up towards the grand finale. And what does it do then? It removes the water entirely and swaps it out for even more enemies. This room is a hellish, checkpoint-laden shooting gallery. But it can't get worse than this, surely? Oh yes it can. So, after this checkpoint, enemies spawn in front and behind you. You have to shoot them all, and then not get electrified by this wire, and then climb this extremely fiddly, diagonal climbing thing which is as fun as it looks, Meanwhile, in the background, the game is telling me to kill myself. And then I had to make this jump, at which point I killed myself. Let's try that again. One last time. So it turns out this is bugged, and the only way to beat it is to limit your frame rate to something really low. I chose 24 FPS, which was hellish because I then had to endure the whole shootout below, which is a lot harder when it's little more than a slideshow. Sorry, I'm moaning so much about this game I'm beginning to resent myself for being so negative. I got past this bit and then had a prolonged shootout with an enemy through this unopened doorway. I didn't know where to go for a while, but then that door just randomly opened for no good reason. We're getting really close to the end now, don't worry. And then... You get powers. The power to control water. And then you head through some rooms and you reach the final boss, where the difficulty level spikes and it decides the whole point of having the power to control water is to pick up barrels and to chuck them at the enemy. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I couldn't figure this out for a while. It was telling me the wrong controls, the whole thing was just generally unfun, and I decided I didn't really care anymore. 
I closed the game down and made this video instead, and I had a lot more fun writing the script than I did from playing the game, I can tell you. It is honestly staggering that I can hate a game about water physics so much. So not finishing the game was a blessing in disguise, because it meant I looked up a playthrough of it, which interestingly was from the original game, and it originally ended right when you got your magical powers. You know, like right by that door I couldn't open and was trying to shoot an enemy through. In the original ending, an enemy takes you by surprise around this corner, and you're saved by that guy you and your radio guy were making death jokes about earlier. And then… this happens. Everybody was justifiably pissed off with this utterly terrible ending, so for the Prophecy remake of this game, it looks like they extended it slightly by adding in the magical powers and the end boss fight, after which your character injects herself, collapses, and then the credits roll. Oh hey, that ending's terrible too. So while I almost didn't finish this game, I feel better knowing the developers didn't bother either. I knew this game was bad, but it still amazes me to know that just 10 years ago, games like this were out there on shelves of shops for unsuspecting victims to buy. Truly incredible. The Xbox 360 was the golden era for crazy physics experiments. Red Faction Gorilla came out a year before Hydrophobia did, and still has the best collapsing physics I've ever seen in a game. But it built a great game around that mechanic. Hydrophobia does not. Hydrophobia is a terrible game. The menu system even has this feedback thing, where you can tell the developers what you think of it. I haven't used it. The fact this game is still so bad and so full of game-breaking bugs 10 years later shows that they probably don't use it either. Hydrophobia didn't have to do much to justify its existence, yet it still failed. It is an impressive feat for this remade, improved version of the game to still be so incomplete, so subpar and so depressingly dull. A team of people made this, so did nobody speak up and express their concerns about the quality of the experience? Did nobody point out the script and be like, it needs an ending? Did nobody bother playing it? This game was intended to be the first of a series of episodic content, but even good episodic games didn't bother keeping this up for long, so it's not too surprising that Hydrophobia never got a second part, because nobody would have played it. The game didn't have to do much, just some physics-based puzzles and juicy flooding segments where you're delaying it with closed doors and climbing to escape a rising water level would have done it. Everything was in place for that. They just went in the most unfun direction they could have done with it. It's a terrible game, poorly thought out, poorly ported to PC and poorly concluded. What a shame. Had it actually done something decent with the water physics, preferably more than five minutes before the final boss, then I think this game would have got a cult following. A sequel even. But as it is, I have no interest in playing it and I can tell you now, you won't either. It might even have been bad enough to give me a phobia of water physics based effects. Jesus Christ.